Hello, I'm Craig Constantine. Hi, I'm Daphna Gold Melchior. Daphna Gold Melchior is a self described person who helps people clarify their high stakes messages. I really like when people are really clear. Like it's one thing to have a concise statement, I do X, but when you have a very particular X, that high stakes message part, I really think that says a lot about how thoughtful you are just in general, but also about how thoughtful you are with what you do to help the people that you're trying to serve. And if you haven't been on the show with me, please join me. We do a little conversation beforehand. So Daph and I already know we're going to talk about alignment. So I wanted to point out your focus on high stakes messages and what you're doing professionally is something that you've clearly thought a lot about. And I'm wondering what your thoughts are about your initial podcast that I saw you create was, and I know you, I don't want to make it sound like you did a, you took the easy way out, but you picked something that was really easy. It was a low hanging fruit. And then you really took the time to think, no, wait, is that really what I want to be podcasting about? So can you tell me about maybe why you changed from what your podcast was originally was originally was to what it is now and about how alignment was the thing that you really used as the pivot point for that change? Absolutely. Thank you. So this is actually a fun way of coming full circle because you, Craig, were actually my very first interviewee ever on that first <laughs> podcast. You remember? I do recall. <laughs> yes. I, and it was a very fun one because you know, I was a good choice for, hey, let's talk about how do you create like physically create workspace for yourself. I'm like, oh, I'm I'm a space creating process nut. But yes, anyway, sorry. <laughs> it was super fun. So what happened with the whole podcasting idea was I jumped into Seth Godin's podcasting workshop, which is actually how I got to meet you, luckily, mm -hmm. without really knowing what was going to be expected. I thought I was going to learn the technology. I had been interviewing people in PR capacities for years. And I thought, okay, so now I'll learn the tech side of it. And it kind of reminded me of radio, which I love during my undergrad in communications. And I thought, great, we'll run with it. On lesson number one, it was like, okay, what yes. is your podcast about? I was like, eek, I need no. to know what my podcast is about. I don't have one, let alone know what it's about. So I thought, hmm, all right. So for the purpose of the exercise, I guess the easiest thing to go for would be something that was actually aligned with what I do professionally, what I know about, what I have information about, what I feel like I could actually contribute to people through. And that was working with researchers and entrepreneurs so my first concept during the workshop was, okay, I'm going to make a podcast about researchers and entrepreneurs, specifically from Israel, where I'm from, who I usually work with locally. And it would be a way of giving listeners insights about the entrepreneurial and research journeys of these professionals through the prism of the importance of clear communication along their evolution of their, of their professions. And that's what I used for the purpose of the exercise throughout the workshop. But then I just didn't do it. The workshop came and go, came and went, and I didn't actually create a podcast. And I kept thinking about it, but nothing really happened. And then when COVID hit, it suddenly occurred to me, wait a minute, suddenly lots of people are thrown into this situation of working remotely, something they're not familiar with. I had always done some sort of hybrid combination of working on my own back office stuff from home and going to work with clients on site with them. And I thought, okay, maybe I could interview different people who already have some experience at working remotely and they could provide their wisdom to people that were just thrown into the situation. And that's how mm -hmm. you became my first interviewee. And I did, what was it? Maybe 14 episodes within a couple of weeks of interviewing all kinds of really fun, wonderful, smart people with their insights on organizing your space and on cybersecurity so that nobody hacks your stuff right. and on <laughs> how to yeah, juggle creating boundaries and right? yeah, keep the kids out. How to right? juggle your kids and your cats and whatever else and whoever else is home with you while you're trying to work from home. And just a whole bunch of topics. Pretty soon they started repeating themselves and I felt like I didn't really have much more <laughs> of intelligence and essence and substance to add on these topics. And we were all pretty much at that point working from home. And there was- Yeah, if you, <laughs> if you didn't listen to the podcast, you figured it out on your own, right? <laughs> the novelty kind of wore off. And I thought, okay. And in any case, this isn't me. This isn't what mm -hmm. I do. I don't have any intrinsic motivation to be known as Daphna the remote work person because right. I'm not Daphna it, the remote work person. As it like- 
I'm going to say as it, as it like faded or coasted to a halt, you know, you did like 13 and then 14, but as you coasted to a halt, was that obvious right as it was ending that you, that like, eh, I'm not really in my niche or, or is that something yes. that you only noticed? Yeah. So that was part like really clear. Yes. Yes. I, I love talking to people. So having the conversations was fun and was a reward in and of itself, no matter what. And it was like this creative project that was fun to do. And you know, it was like, okay, check, have applied what was learned in workshop, can <laughs> yes. do podcasts. Yeah, I, it's actually easy for you. Like, I know how to do this. Push this button, pull the lever, and everybody else is like, wow, you made a podcast. Like, that's the have, easy part. <laughs> have earned continuous card-carrying membership in the podcasters community <laughs> <laughs> of, yes. Seth, of Seth Godin's workshop alumni, which was a very important card to keep carrying for me because they're really fabulous people. And I, and I love the justification to keep interacting with everybody. And... But in terms of motivation, when we think about certainly Seth's philosophy about a podcast as a way to find your voice or understand that close to none of us are ever going to make any money off of podcasts, or in fact, we're actually going to invest quite a bit of money, even in the basics, the basics of equipment, the basics of hosting, right? It becomes a semi-expensive hobby. Rather right. than right, non-trivial, it an expense. <laughs> <laughs> rather than a line of of a stream of income, right? right? So I would say even more so that the motivation to continue doing it would have to be that you actually derive pleasure, joy, satisfaction, a sense of meaning by doing it, and hopefully maybe that you're actually contributing to others by doing it. And mm-hmm. it just seems to me that all of that would grow if the topic itself was something that I felt aligned with, is something that I felt was in the same category and in the same basket and in the same domain expertise as what I do professionally. I felt like maybe I would be able to reclaim my motivation to continue having these conversations, to continue publishing them, to have interesting asides, to have intelligent questions to have some insights of my own for the intros, even if I continued and I have continued doing interviews rather than Mm -hmm. hosts on mic. Although it's also a topic that I feel like there's certainly much more chance that I could at some point get up the guts to have an intelligent host on mic if it's a topic that I feel like I know plenty about. So you're, you almost, um, how long was it just roughly from your initial, I have an idea for a podcast. I'm going to take this course and it's going to be about X to, to when you, pivoted and you really almost pivoted back to exactly the same thing, but it's, it's not quite, it's not exactly the same, but how long was that, that, that whole journey? More than a year for sure. Mm-hmm. More than a year. So do you remember, um, so now that you've, um, you've pivoted or you've rebooted, do you really remember what you felt like when you had the first podcast idea? Like, does it feel like that uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that that was a very fresh new idea, and this is really cool, and I'm energized. Does it feel as fresh and new and as as energized after you've pivoted or and now that you've realigned? The topic itself does, or even if it doesn't feel fresh, because I have been in this niche for quite a few years now. I mean, I've been doing some shape or form of working with researchers and entrepreneurs for over 20 years at this point. So I don't know if fresh is the right word. But it is, again, that's why I think the word alignment is absolutely right. It's aligned. Mm. It feels right. It feels like home. It feels familiar in a good sense. It feels like I have what to contribute. It feels, it feels right. It feels Mm. right. It feels like I'm a fish in water. Mm. I I really, I'm I'm glad that you've dug into how it feels because that was what I was doing with that terrible question, (laughs) not realizing it was (laughs) trying to understand like you've got this, um, uh, it's something to think of like a desktop model, you know, like, Whoa, if only we could try this on a desktop, like you just did, you, you had an idea for a podcast. It was inspiring and it's cool. And I'm really psyched up and everything. And then, all right, well, I'm going to change the topic and do things. And then it kind of winds down and then you come back and you have this feeling again. So it's like this perfect little test case of here's something that you've been doing for 20 years, but now in this slightly different, but not very much different incarnation, it's motivating. It's inspiring. It's obviously energizing. It's something you're passionate about. Um, and I think that's, uh, um, a light at the end of the tunnel for the, like, for those of us who are like, boy, I hope I'm able to make this not be a chore after three years of just like, well, your 
desktop experiment here seems to say if it, if what you're doing is aligned with the thing, the bigger thing that you're passionate about, duh, you're going to be passionate about podcasting. I think. Um, I think that it becomes so. less of a chore and more of a hobby if it's a topic of your own choosing rather than something that somebody assigned to you or something that you feel in those cases you should get paid for it. Right. (laughs) But even then, you know, just because it's really tough to connect the dots through the money. So it's like, I'm doing this job that I really don't like, but I get paid really good. And the money enables me to do all these other things. That's not really enough. After, after a bunch of years, eventually there's not enough money. It's not enough tea in China, you know, to, to make it actually be fun and energizing. Um, is there, is there anything about, um, so, so now you're, I know your podcast is like, uh, not back up and running, but like rebooted, the new thing is up and running. Is there anything about it that you had to avoid? So like when you started it over, was there anything you went, yeah, I really want to do a podcast, but I am not doing X. Was there anything about it that you avoided to avoid like poisoning the well? Does that make sense? I can't think of anything specific that I avoided. Um, Let's think. I'm not sure I understood what. what well, I I, I'm wondering answer. if. So for me, some things that I do, like with this particular podcast show, is like I don't like to edit. I also have really bad hearing, so editing is like asking me to edit is dumb. So I, I don't like to edit. So I'm like, all right, I'm making a podcast and I'm doing no editing, and, th- and that's what I was wondering if, if there's anything about your current project that you had intentionally see because, as an experienced podcaster, having done a course and having done a podcast you would be well aware of like editing or maybe recording intros or like music. Like there's all these things that we as podcasters know about. And I'm just wondering if there was anything that you had decided to elite, Um, but no is a completely valid answer (laughs) to my question. I didn't decide in advance. I didn't decide in advance to refrain from anything in particular, but I did actually. mm -hmm. Go ahead. But you did actually go I did put into practice, apropos of what you just mentioned about music and intros. I did. I did create a general intro for the podcast and then I have the background music that I I create on uh, a specific episode intro based on kind of a synopsis about mm. the person that I'm interviewing as the intro of that episode and there's a really short outro that's consistent throughout the podcast and the fact that it's aligned with what I do leaves me still wondering even now after 20 episodes what's the fine line and the balance between listeners being able to get value out of the podcast in and of itself as its own standalone product. The podcast is not meant to be a PR mechanism, strictly a PR mechanism for me through which to advertise my business. However, since it is aligned with what I do, I feel like I do need to, maybe I've taken it to an extreme (laughs) that people could listen to probably all the episodes and still not know exactly what it is that I do professionally, nor deduce from it what service I'm offering. So maybe I'm actually doing myself a disservice that if I'm creating this product, which is aligned with what I do, why shouldn't I be able to use it gently, delicately, in good taste as a means of providing intrinsic value in and of its own for people to listen to and to hopefully get valuable insights by listening to the interviews. And at the same time, I feel like I still need to find the best way of leveraging these interviews or maybe the outro or maybe the show notes or maybe some sort of add-on to it so that people could connect the dots, speaking of connecting the dots, listening to such an interview and say, ah, so that's what she does. Ooh, we need somebody to help us with that. Right. So I had I had two thoughts. One, and this I don't, I don't think this one's necessarily worth pursuing. But one thought I had was, like, what's the big challenge? Like, what hurdles are you facing? Like, when you like, I'm here's the thing that I do generally, big picture, and and this podcast is aligned with that. But when I try to make these podcasts, I keep running into this problem. So that that's one thing I'd be curious about, because if I feel like your alignment would help you figure out a way to solve those problems. Um, so maybe like, I'll, I'll leave that as a question. Is there anything about it? That's like, Oh, this is a problem. The thing that I find most problematic about self-promotion is that it very quickly becomes obnoxious (laughs) And (laughs) and I am physically allergic to obnoxious self-promotion. You know, I itch when I read social media posts in which somebody is talking about how fabulous their service is. 
I'm just really, really averse to that. LinkedIn, and I, LinkedIn is sliding that way. I mean, like Facebook is like whatever, you know, but like LinkedIn is starting to slide toward these breathless, triple spaced, everything is awesome. And I'm so excited for being part of it. And I'm just like, I mean, that's cool. Like definitely say thank you to people who gave you access to some opportunity, but there's also, there's nothing here, you know, and that's exactly. a, anyway, me wagging exactly. so, LinkedIn a little bit, but. So I totally would not want to become the person that at the end of a post that I wrote or at the end of a podcast that I shipped, I would not want one person to come out of that with the experience. Okay. I want 10 minutes of my time, le- of, of my life back. You know, you just, <laughs> you just right. totally wasted my time on your own disgusting self-promotion. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be that person. It really bothers me when other people do that. And I feel like there's a need for a more delicate, more subtle, maybe one of the concepts in another of Seth Godin's wonderful workshops that I attended, the marketing seminar, that was kind of a struggle for me was... And, and I tried to adopt his philosophy about how if you reconceptualize marketing, instead of the way lots of people think of it as you're trying to forcefully sell something to somebody that they don't want. No, mm-hmm. you're actually trying to generously solve someone's problem. If what you're holding in your hands is not the solution to their problem, that's fine. You move on. They move on. They're not your target audience. That's fine. On an intellectual level, that makes perfect sense to me. (laughs) But when you actually have to translate that into your own self-promotional messaging, I don't know. I just, the, the, the girl in me who was taught to be modest, who was taught never to be arrogant, that arrogance (laughs) is this terrible sin, you know, that you're not the one to sing your own praises, that all of, all of that in my education, in my upbringing, in a lot of things that I identify with, even when I'm in charge of my own (laughs) philosophy at this point. (laughs) I I agree with a lot of that. And it makes it hard to find an appropriate measure of self-promotion so that on one hand, you're actually helping those who need you find you and understand what the service is through which you could actually be serving them and Mm -hmm. balancing between that and not shoving your service in their face. I agree absolutely i think um I, I, how many podcasts do i have four if i had I had a fifth one that i got rid of it's like and there's always for me i f- i feel like i'm trying to hide like i, I would want to just say like welcome to the podcast or community podcast you know today i'm talking to daphna and and if you notice i didn't i haven't said the url for where the podcast or community is look i haven't said anything right i haven't told nobody knows what i do and really that's me hiding and I, I probably should get over that. I should be like, yeah, you should go to podcaster.community or quite honestly, I think if you search Google podcaster space community, I think we're on the first page now. Woo! Um, just go there. Just go there. Like I, I haven't, I haven't counted, but I think, um, you know, I'm go there. We, we put this, like, put this stuff in the, and I'm just like, yeah, but if people really wanted to know they could search, but I'm like, but people don't have time. So just tell them where it is. So I, I've been trying to push back against my own hiding but for me, I don't know about your experience, but for me, I can, <clears throat> excuse me, I can be the class clown. I can be the obnoxious, as my uncle says, rude, crude, and ill-mannered. I can be the attention-seeking, you know, stereotypical American. Um, so I work really hard to step on that. And I, to me, I feel like I'm steering back toward that a little bit when I have to start talking about, this is what Movers Mindset does, which is a thing that I do. I had 103 episodes of Movers Mindset. I've, I'm coming up on 500 episodes on my little box of quotes podcast. And it's like, ooh, saying that stuff makes me feel skeevy, but I, you know, that's real. Like those are real accomplishments. So they are. I think, I think you make a great point about when, when all of us, any of us are mindful about how much of us should be present, like how much of Craig, like the Craig story or the Daphne story, how much of that should be actually in the podcast and how much of it should be explicitly I, you know, the first person version of it in the podcast versus like a lot of times guests bring up like, well, I met you when you were helping and, you know, and like it kind of comes out like second person, you know? So I think when we're mindful of that, that let, that enables us to be more intentional about it. And I think that's the best way to do it is to just to, you know, think what do we want people to take away from what we're creating and then to try and, you know, change the mix. Um, Totally. I've also gotten comments from people on some of the episodes in which there was more Daphna or less Daphna. (laughs) mm. I've actually gotten comments. Wow, there was a a nice bit of Daphna (laughs) in that 
in that interview, even though it was about you inviting this guest and highlighting their story and talking about their entrepreneurship or their research, we felt more of your presence and it was fun. It was fun to listen to. And maybe both of us kind of tend to be so modest that maybe we're robbing our listeners of the fact that they chose to listen to our podcast, not only for our guests, but also because they actually want to hear how we as the hosts of it are providing our insights and our knowledge and what yeah, we what's our own, what's our passion. Yeah. That's yeah. That's a great point. Um, I stopping is the hardest part. I think that's a great place to stop right there. Um, uh, as always, it's a pleasure to talk to you. And um, we, we had like a little Craig caused oopsie with Zencaster originally. So it took us a little longer than normal. So I think we actually had more conversations about talking about what are we going to talk about? So I think that worked out really well to talk about alignment. Um, so thanks for taking a half hour out of your day to sit down and chat. Thank you for inviting me to. Thanks, Craig. Have a gorgeous summer. Stay healthy. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.